advent calendar. Now for my advent project I'm going to need a door and I've shown you how to make a door before in vlogs 32 and 33 so I'm not going to show you that again. You can watch those videos if you like to make a door and um, this time I'm just going to paint it and then age it and I'll need a different cutting mat for that so I don't mess up my pretty pink one. <laughs> And for paint colors, I'm thinking blues based on the design of the sweater yesterday, which I showed you for the Christmas stocking. So uh, I've got a couple of blues here. And for the base, I would like to use uh, a green so that might come through when I age it. So I'll start with that and then I'll decide on which blue I'm going to use later on when that dries. Oof, I like that color. Now it's time to continue with the painting. And uh, here are my paint swatches. And I really like that deep dark blue one. So I'll be using that. I would like the door to look like it has a little bit of age, uh, especially on the bottom of the door. And that's why I'm going to add some paint cracks. And you could do that by using crackle glaze, but I don't have that. So I'll just use some white glue and um, just wood glue is fine. So what I'll do is I've painted the door a color and it's best to have a a light color at the bottom and a darker color on top or the other way around because that shows the cracks the best. So I've got something prepared to show you how it works because it, it, on the door it's a little bit small. So I've got the base coat of acrylic paint and on top of that I'm just going to use a layer of wood glue and it can be fairly thick because the more paint you use, or the more glue you use, I mean, the better the, the, crack, the cracks will show up. And you can already see here on the sides why this is going to work. Because acrylic paint and white glue don't really like each other. So that's why they start separating and that's what gives the cracked effect. Now I'll just clean my brush in some water and then I've prepared a little bit of watered down blue paint. It's not a lot and I'll just go over it and you can immediately see what happens. <laughs> It starts to separate. So I've got some more paint here. And go over here. And like I said, this is really thin watered down paint. And the wood, or, yeah, the glue, the white glue is still a little wet. And now you just watch the effect take place. I always love looking or watching the process of the crackle appear and um, sometimes you get to a stage and you think oh this is really beautiful and um, I'm so so happy with it and it keeps continuing to evolve and change so the end result may, may be very different and um, you can see here this 
the one on the, the more green side. Uh, that was very diluted watered down paint and um, you can see the cracks are a lot smaller than the slightly thicker paint. And uh, I'm saying thicker, but that was also diluted with water, but it was slightly thicker than the one on the left. On the left, but you can see the cracks are a lot thicker, bigger, and different. Um, and each time you do this, the cracks will be different. <laughs> uh, you have little control over it, other than you can change the direction by um, painting the the, the um, glue in a different direction. Yeah, this is a fun technique. So. Now I'm going to try it on the door. I've just reapplied some of the green paint down here at the bottom of the door because I want the cracks to appear in very specific places. So um, I'll start down here and then later on I'll apply some more on some other parts of the door. So first we'll put some glue on there. I think that will be enough, or maybe even too much, who knows. And then... And I'm going to try and do it evenly. There, and then I'll clean up the sides again because I don't want any glue to spill out there. I'd like it to be sharp. And then I've got some watered down navy blue paint and I should really be using my white brush for that. You can already see it's starting to move the other paint below that. So I think I'll have to make haste and try that. Well, we'll see. This takes quite a long time to dry. And I'll try and clean that up again. So I hope that will give the effect I'm after. It's not quite dry in the middle yet, and you can see that the longer it takes to dry, the bigger the cracks are. So um, that's because there was a lot of water in the middle. So now I'm going, uh, I've painted a few spots green, and I'm only going to do those spots because the rest I don't, I will sand a little bit, but I don't want the crack crackle to go everywhere. So just a little bit. So that has dried now and um, I have removed a little bit here on the side. I'll work on the door some more and um, I do like the crackling on the base. But I'll have to work on it a little bit more to... Um, I think it's a bit busy. <laughs> but the other thing I wanted to show you... Um, here's a little bit of paper with some of the water from where I cleaned my paintbrushes and 
just rub that really hard until it becomes a little bit sticky and you can just rub off I mean this is you see that it just comes off really easily and this is after it has dried for um, I think it was almost 24 hours so this works really really well as well and is a lot quicker and I think that looks really good. And this is where the door handle goes, so um, there will be some rubbing, natural rubbing there. But that's a really easy and quick way of doing that. And I think it looks better already. Um, I think it has to do with composition. <laughs> it sounds odd, but um, even when you're doing a piece like this, you're making a composition, like a painting. So in this case, the door is my canvas. So, yeah, it all has to do with composition, color, composition. So... I may do a little bit more here. But it's a lot better already. Now I do think the green is a little bit too bright and I'm going to tone that down with a bit of raw umber paint. And I did a little test here. And I think that here's some raw umber I painted over top of the green and the blue and I think that looks a little bit better than just that bright green so and it's just watered down raw umber and I'm going to do a little bit and see what it looks like I think the bottom part needs some of that And here, I also want to have some of it. I won't do it all, but just a bit. Actually, I like this bit best. <laughs> and this with the crackle. It almost looks like an animal skin. <laughs> I was going through my supplies looking for a door handle and I found these. This one. And where did the other one go? Maybe it's that one. Yeah. So I could use either of these two and I like the coloring on this one but I think the proportion is a bit wrong and I actually quite like that flower on there as well so I think this one will be very nice Uh, it's a bit bright, <laughs> so I'll have to tone that down and I still have to do a little more uh, rubbing here, I think. We'll see. Because that wouldn't make sense if there's no rubbing on that side. And I've also got a broken handle here, so I can drill a hole and um, put that handle in there. Maybe it should be over here, so that, that needs to come down. A little bit. It 
Well, the door is finished. I did tone down the colors on the door panels and on the bottom quite a bit because I thought it was far too busy. And I think on the video it looks a little bit brighter than in reality. Uh, and I've toned down the color on the brass or the metal and I think it looks really nice. <laughs> I'm pleased with it. So um, I'm going to make a door frame next and it's going to be a very simple one and I'm just going to measure the height of the door. So about here. I have to cut two of those and then I have to cut one that goes across. Well, I've got the pieces for the door frame to size, like that. And now I'm going to attach some hinges. And I'm going to do that before I make the door frame, <laughs> because that's a lot easier. Now I have made a video about installing hinges before, so I'm not going to be showing you that today. But if you like, you can watch it on Miniaturist Journal 34 how to install miniature hinges. There we are. The door frame is finished. Um, I made a little threshold for it as well and um, painted it white. And now you'll have to wait and see what I'm going to do with it. So, until next time.